everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elise. I'm a runner based in San Francisco, currently training for London Marathon. As of today, we're officially seven weeks out, actually less than seven weeks out to uh, the race. And over the past two weeks, uh, I did two, I would say quality long runs, a 15 miles uh, paced long run, and then last Saturday, a 19 miles run. Uh, I know uh, from my previous video when I first reviewing um, at the Elite V4, I said I'm not going to use it for any more long runs, maybe uh, a workout, like a track workout, so I can preserve these shoes in case I want to use them for London. But because um, these workouts are so critical, and then I felt the pressure to abs uh, the need to absolutely nail the workout. Uh, in my current shoe rotation, training shoe rotation, I don't have anything that I feel comfortable to run these long paced uh, workouts. So I decided to take these for these long runs. Um, that basically take these shoes to 50 miles as of right now. So I would like to th share my thoughts on these shoes after wearing them for 50 miles, um, as well as my updated thoughts on if I will use them for London Marathon. Let's begin. I'm traveling for work today. So before I go, I need to do today's strength training. It's gonna be quick, just 40 minutes, and I'll be on the road. Sunrise is about like 7 a.m. 
by 6 30 i hope uh, i can see a little bit light outside uh, and then uh, i would go out for a run today's run is 50 minutes of uh, easy normal pace so um, i'm gonna finish my coffee and get going in a bit I traveled to Austin uh, for work for three days um, and how I've been structured my training during this cycle is that I run on average five days a week and two days I do strength training on Monday I usually run 40 to 50 minutes of easy run and on Tuesday is usually steady pace anywhere from 60 minutes to 90 minutes uh, just trying to bridge the gap between my marathon pace to my tempo pace so usually anywhere around like 8 30 um, minute mile on um, Wednesday a strength training day I'll do like five minutes elliptical and then do an hour uh, strength training I never really made it to an hour usually uh, 35 minutes of strength training on Thursday it's usually a track workout speed workout uh, and Friday easy run uh, 40 to five, uh, 50 40 to 50 minutes of easy run and Saturday for long run Sunday for strength training so I will run Monday Tuesday Thursday Friday and Saturday and I will do stress training on Wednesday and Sunday so uh, last week uh, because of this work trip I was leaving on Sunday morning before leaving to the airport, I was able to squeeze in uh, one um, strength training um, in the morning uh, before leaving for the airport. And uh, on Monday and Tuesday, both run, uh, I was able to find a nice trail in downtown Austin. I absolutely loved the view on the run. Although I was exhausted, I wasn't sure uh, the reason I was so exhausted because I was just traveling and there was about like two hours of differences or I was still in a process of recovering from that Saturday long run um, for that 50 I ran like about, about 15 60 miles of a long run on previous Saturday so coming back from the trip last week I had actually had a hard time recovering just from the two days work trip uh, and I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who is training for a marathon or just trying to squeeze in some runs in the morning or in the evening out of your busy schedule. You guys are all doing great. Uh, I am someone who actually mostly work from home and my office is only 10 to 15 minutes walk away from uh, my apartment. So it's, it's pretty easy uh, for me to compare to a lot of people. Uh, to squeeze in these runs in the morning uh, but I am usually exhausted um, if there's any change of routine of my, uh, if there's any changes on my current routine so I was definitely feeling uh, the stress on my body from this two-day travel I do have more work travel at the end of this month March and uh, I will be running a higher mileage and intensity during that week so I'm curious to see how my body is going to respond to that. So before then, I will try my best to not worry about it, and then I will deal with with it as it comes. Um, yeah, yeah. So now let's talk about these shoes. 
Um, right now, uh, they officially have actually 48.1 miles on them. Uh, I'll round up to 50 miles. So I would say this is my thoughts after running in them for 50 miles. Um, out of these 50 miles, the first run was uh, 40 miles, two hour easy run uh, in the Golden Gate Park. Uh, my first thought uh, from the fir- my thought from the first run was that they are very lightweight, very comfortable. Um, I could run in a pace with a relatively less effort compared to my daily trainer. Uh, my leg felt pretty fresh after that run, and I love how snappy the midsole uh, felt. Um, so personally, I think everyone has a preference for their running shoes. Personally, I don't like anything super firm. I like soft and bouncy. These are not soft, but they are bouncy. I would say they're like a little bit snappy and bouncy at the same time. Um, so my second run in this shoe uh, was a 60 miles long run. Two miles easy um, and then three miles at 8.15 to 8.20, uh, repeat for four times, and then cool down. Um, I was for sure that if I didn't run in these shoes, I won't be able to uh, run at that pace. Um, and I'm not even sure if this is the new shoe magic. I was so, maybe I was just scared to disappoint myself or disappoint uh, myself that these shoes are not good enough for this pace. Maybe that's why I was able to run at a pace that I want. But they absolutely delivered that run for me. I actually had some um, time to recover from that run. My legs were kind of banged up um, on, on the Saturday following the run. I'm not even sure if it's because of these shoes, um, the carbon plate or just because I'm finally running a long run with a higher pace than I used to. Uh, and then it's just the type of the strain or stress I would normally feel uh, on my leg. But that was the second run. The third run was last Saturday. It was a 90 miles long run. So um, my coach said try to run on average uh, faster than 845 minute mile pace and honestly I didn't know how to do that just run a steady pace for 90 miles so I decided to incorporate this workout called 4321 uh, essentially you warm up for six miles and then uh, you run your marathon pace for four miles three miles, two miles, and one miles with um, a little bit of time in between to recover. And then uh, building two miles to cut down, that add up to around 90 miles. Um, these shoes killed the workout. No, I, w- I should say I killed the workout. Um, or because of the help of the shoes, I was able to uh, deliver the workout. Um, it, I felt, of course, I was trying to work up the pace to maintain at marathon pace for an eight minute mile, but uh, they were so stable. Uh, the My thoughts wearing these shoes were running at marathon pace was that once I locked into that pace, I felt very stable in them. And then I can just run at that pace and stay focused for miles and um, I know if you're looking at the pace chart I was running at 820 during that two mile repeat Um, mostly because honestly at the time I was really tired and I I was also running against a very strong wind in the marina uh, San Francisco Uh, so I, I don't blame the shoe I just think that it was a very intense workout for me and it is okay if I slip pace during a certain repetition uh, I was very happy with these shoes uh, during the last two mile of that 19 mile run I I was almost like done I couldn't run anymore but I was able to cool down at about 945 minute pace 
uh, slowly back to far, fair building. There's a farmer market which I like, um, and I would say. Honestly, I don't think I could have done the workout without the help of these shoes. So, I am very happy that I got them, even if、uh, I may not use them for London. <laughs> Spoiler alert: I may not use them for London. I、uh, they are my great training companion, especially for these long runs where you want to push the pace. Okay, so.、Um, Do I have any updated view on these shoes? Yes, I definitely think they are on the firmer side compared to Nike Zoom Max Four,、uh, like Vaporfly One or Two or Three.、Uh, the midsole is definitely like slightly firmer. They are not firm; they are just a little bit more like snappy compared to like a soft, bouncy foam.、Um, it's. I would definitely race a half marathon in. And these shoes, but just because like my personal preference, I have some、uh, injury on my left foot, so、um, I was feeling a little bit of strain or stress on my left calf and left foot、uh, during the last few miles of the run.、Uh, so personally, I think I will use them for half marathon, but I will reconsider if I will use them for full marathon or not. In terms of wear or tear,、uh, the shoes,、um, these shoes are looking pretty new to me.、Uh, there's also no visible sign at the bottom,、um, so there are no visible sign of、uh, losing traction at the bottom. And if we're looking at the midsole, there's a little bit of like. These like lines, I think, from like just compressing the foam, but they look still look pretty good. One visible sign of wearing is here.、Uh, I'm not sure if it's just because of me. I, I was looking at all my running shoes.、Uh, most of my running shoes, this part is gone、uh, once I run past 150 miles. So,、oh, one thing that I wanted to share is that. I have been using the glucose monitor for over two weeks now.、Um, you change this、um, sensor every two weeks, so this is a new one.、Uh, I'm looking forward to share some lessons learned from using them for the past two weeks. I have been wearing them for、uh, two weeks nonstop, meaning that I could see how what is my blood sugar. During workouts, strength trainings, and then these long runs when I'm feeling with gels, I have a lot of information on my hand, and now I just have to do the homework to summarize the learning. I look forward to sharing my lessons learned from CGM in my next video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you guys soon.